How's it going, Specs? Just seeing if I can get... I watched some videos to see if I could get um, Facebook streaming today. And I have no idea. Oh, hi, bud. Hey, can you go back upstairs? Okay. Ah, the streaming on Facebook. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it. For some reason, it never works. But it looks like Twitch and YouTube are going just fine. Um, da -da -da. you know, I think I did get your email. You were asking me to look at your portfolio. Was that the one? Oh, let's. I got some echo going. Um. Oh, it might be working. Oh, Facebook might be going. Here we go. Facebook is actually working. What in the world? Um, yeah, okay, I did get it. I did get a, like a flood of emails this week. So <laughs> apologies. I will get I'll get back to you tomorrow. Um, and it'll be my first thing that I do before I, I start going in the day. Trying to figure out where do we leave off yesterday. Oh, we were doing Patry stuff. This is not where we left. Um, we left off here. That's better. Okay. Yeah, I want to get this gal done today. I think I think she's the last time that I'm working on her. <laughs> Got my kid that's refusing to go to bed behind me. He's playing with the Incredibles. Oh. Okay, I'm going to bring up the <laughs> the concept. Again, this is this is concept art by Patry Bolonovsky, who is a great concept artist um, and has been kind enough to do this, you know, create this character for the the draw on your style challenge. Um, I've had a lot of fun with it. He's he's a super awesome guy, extremely talented artist. Oops. I think I just messed up that image. I'm going to re-import it. Um, he's a super nice guy. Incredibly talented artist. And it's just been... It's been super fun to... Whoa. To be able to sculpt and play around with this. There we go. So check out his work, Patry Bolonovsky. Um, I love his art station stuff and his little tutorials that he does as well. They've been a great help, even for a really bad painter like myself. But he's he's a stud. Okay. And I'm just still getting things set up, so give me a few, just a minute or so. Hey, thanks, Elton, from Facebook. Thank you.
Whoops. Who knows if this is all working? Yes, thank you. Um, okay, just getting everything set up still. Let's think of what I want to do next. So I've got the basic costume blocked in, and the hair is like still probably the furthest from anything. Um, but I think I want to do the bandana next, just because that's like easy pickings. So I might just go ahead and start sculpting the, ban the bandana on this gal. And then we'll just slowly move on from there. Actually, I know what I need to do. Is I need to make an idea of a... <laughs> of... Her eyebrow because you can just see it just enough that it's going to it's going to catch a little bit of light in there. Don't look at it without the without that the bandana. Actually, I want to I I forgot I need to probably tell people that I'm streaming tonight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Boom! Okay. I'm done. I'm done for now. <laughs> okay. Now we'll continue to go. So let's do... I'm going to do just a quick down and dirty eyebrow. Um, the way I like to do eyebrows, especially when they're, you know, polyed, polymodeled, is I just draw them with the topology brush. It's really, really easy to, to pull out some geo split unmasked points and then I can kind of move this into the exact position that I want because it's really thick right now and once I have one side I'll just flip it and put it on the other Like Hokuto from FLX, F, F E X L without the bandanas, she becomes a dangerous lady. <laughs> I don't know that reference, but I'm gonna trust you on that one, Beesman. Thank you. So the goal is to finish her up tonight. You know, uh, at least the modeling. I don't know if I'll get a full render tonight, but. It sure would be nice.
I'm not really going to spend too much time on these eyebrows. Mainly it's like you barely see it. And I know my, my eyes are a little bit different from this, but um, I still want... I think adding just a touch of eyebrows actually does make a pretty big difference. So we're going to duplicate this. And then mirror. And then just move this one into place. But eyebrows are, are pretty, you know, one of the defining characteristics of like a good expression and a good face. So just having those little hints of eyebrows going to mean a ton. And then we will make them dark. but not too dark. So hope everyone had a good week. I'm doing I'm doing well. I'm hanging in there. We're, we're just hanging in there. We're actually doing a lot of remodeling. You'll notice that behind me is a huge mess. Stuff on the floor, stuff on the walls, barely anything on the walls, trays of things right here behind. We are currently remodeling a huge portion of our house. Well, not remodeling, but like we're just refinishing. So I just finished... Um, refinishing our garage I know that that's that sounds real fancy but it sucked there's so many holes in the garage nobody cares about your garage but we just finished the garage we put up a bunch of hanging storage um, to get ready for the future Ninos that are coming. Nino, I should say. I'm going to do one more social media post just to remind people that I'm out. Oh gosh, no. We're going to add a link. Okay, now I'm done. All done with that.
So I think we're going to do the bandana first, at least a rough pass. And then we'll do we'll move on to the hair next. <clears throat> Elton says, Dang, I'm glad the last time I had to remodel my house was almost ten years ago. Ha ha ha. That's awesome. Ah, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> um the, actually the remodel has been going. It's not like a remodel where we're just basically repainting and rehanging shelves and, and things of that nature. But it's it's so much work. But I feel really good about my patching skills now because I've patched so many holes. The like... That I, I just feel really good and solid about things. Like I can, oh, there there's a hole there. There's there's a giant gaping hole in the wall. Ah ha! I've got that. And then I'll go and I'll patch it. But the thing is, is like you can't do patching quickly. So you have like. You still have you know, to wait for it to dry, and then you have to sand, and then you have to wait for it, th then you patch it again, and then you have to wait for it to sand again, or then you have to sand it again, and there's just no quick way to do it. So we were finally able to, like, paint our garage, and that took forever. Because we have really tall ceilings in our garage, so I painted them, but I'm like outstretched as far as I can go using this paint pole that was barely long enough to get to the top of the garage, the ceiling. And I, I was so sort of looking like straight up, um, and I hated it. Oh man, did I hate that. I have had a lot of fun at work lately, though. Um, so we're, we're at work. I work at a company called Chair. It's a part of Epic Games, and we're we're kind of working on this game that we partnered with Bad Robot and J.J. Abrams to develop. Um, we've been doing that for the past few years, and everything's like starting to come together, and it's like oh. You're kind of seeing like the magic start to happen. I mean, you see little bits of that along the ways, but it feels like it's really starting to to come together. You know, when everything comes together, comes together type of thing. Does that make sense? People are starting to use spray for that. It's much easier. Oh, then patching and sanding? Are they just like using a texture to go to get over it? Probably. We had a, a contractor come out and he told us about that he was just, oh yeah, we'll just spray it and cover up 
you know, cover up the the mess in that way, and the, it'll be fine. But having a contractor do our garage, I'm like, if we're going to put money into the house, it's not going to be for you to remake our garage look. I mean, we have a one-car garage. Making it look a little nicer is not going to really do too much to the value, the overall value of our house. Just starting to think of like, okay, so I'm going to be doing this hair probably is the next thing. So I'm going to start deleting things I don't want. And maybe it's time to actually figure out what this braid is. Okay, so I'm going to delete this braid actually. Let's just do a new one. So this is this is not a brush that I made. I just found this on, um, oh spray for the painting. Oh I I no we're just we're just hand painting everything like this. And you'd think because like I'm an artist, I like to paint walls. I don't like to paint the walls. I don't. Just get it done. Um, Let's see what we got here. So anyways, I didn't make this brush. This is a brush from ZBrush Central um, by Smilk, it looks like. So someone was kind enough to make that brush. The only things I'm changing right now are the curve modifiers to size. So it's going to start big and taper to small. And I like to actually put a subtle roll off like this so it'll kind of curve and what we're going to turn on is I think it's liquify or elastic let's see if, if this is right yeah I'm going to turn on elastic this is going to give us a little bit more control over the exact curve that we're making just so I can take this and I can actually rotate it just like that um, I think I'm just holding shift to rotate or control to rotate Whoops. I guess we don't have to make this in darkness and change the depth because right now the depth of this is high just want it to be flush with a curve and then I'm going to turn off snap so it can actually go in to this hair it 
See the cool thing about like the the uh, elastic is I can just take it and pull it out a little bit more, and it will dynamically change. And I'm going to worry about the twist once I get the position of everything right. Whoops. And they can just hover over it and smooth, and it will kind of straighten out. And I'm going to apologize right now. Um, how did I make the braid? The braid is an insert mesh that someone else made. I just downloaded it. This is just to save time. Um, it was made by Smilk <laughs> on ZBrush Central. So I'm sure you could just look up um, Smilk's braid brush or even just braid ZBrush insert mesh. And it will come up. So right now I want to just get maybe the just the general curve Hey Tiago, how's it going? I wonder if I'm going on the the face or the YouTube. I didn't check the YouTube if I was doing anything on that. my channel. Hey, it looks like I am. Um, yeah. <laughs> so now that I've got the braid more or less where I want it. I'll, I'll probably tweak it just a little bit more. Just coming off the shoulder. Um, now I want to start adding in some twists to it. This is probably my favorite new feature of ZBrush 2018 is clicking and holding control and being able to twist. And just sliding up and down, giving giving this just a bit more interest. And this might actually be with um, an older feature. Man, I can't do this. I'm not an, an electronic kind of guy. And I want to look at this from all angles. Angles. I know I'm probably just going to render it with one. So like, there's things that I don't have to concern myself with, like the end. <laughs> um, but I have found that if you are a little more focused on all the angles that the original angle seems stronger because it feels solid. Hey, it's John Adams. John Adams is gracing us with her presence. <laughs> what, a, what a creepy emoji that is. <laughs> Ashley, how's it going? Everybody should know Ashley. She is awesome. She's, she's a streaming machine. Um, a streamer for Pixel Logic and all around badass and extremely talented artist. So please check her out. Um, a cubed is is what I can. I don't know how to follow. 
Watch this. This is so fancy. Boom. I'm, I'm real fancy. I know the technologies really well. How's it going? Oh, you're hiding. Don't bring attention. Shh. Don't. Everyone look away. Look away. Uh, Angry Mondays. Yes. So, yeah. So, a, an idea that I did have is to kind of mix these braids with, like, little braids. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I'll leave you go for it. It's pretty looking pretty good. Or it's looking pretty good so far. I will leave you with some chassis for people to see. Oh, thank you, thank you. I don't. I'm gonna click on this link and maybe we'll see. Ah, it's the it's the FEXL. We'll look. We'll check out that later. Um. Where do you go to get the braids again? I didn't catch that. Just pixel. So look, Google. Um, I M M I M M braid Z brush, and it will pull up like the whole I M M brush library that people upload their stuff to. Um, Ashley asks, "Oh, I'm good. Just here to take over your chat, steer you off topic, being knowing." Yes. Thank you. That's very nice. Um, I'm doing well. Just trying to survive, I guess. Oh, goodness. How are you doing? Are you still on Pixelogic streaming hiatus? I know that you were taking a break for a little bit. Um, I've done that, and I'm doing that. <laughs> So I get it. <laughs> Just putting a little bit of like different sizes in these. Um, and then I'm going to take this braid brush again now I'm gonna see if I can add in another braid into it that's even bigger no something that could actually disappear that you just kinda of forget even was there I'm trying to like interpret what this is because I know it's all like pulled back, but it'd be kind of cool. Of what if there's a few braids in there talking to each other, creating a braid family? Uh, Robbie Smiths, how's it going? I'm doing well. Oh no. And I'll worry about like actually blending these all together um, once. Once you guys stop staring at me. Can't work when you're staring at me. Um, it feels good, says A cubed, about taking a break. Um, you might not realize the stress and information exhaustion when you ex experience it until you cut it off. Yes. That's like exactly, that's kind of how I was feeling. Like it was this weird this weird stress ball that wasn't for some reason was like overtaking me for some reason. I mean, I loved it. And it's fun, but I was having, I was having some problem or just like trying to find time to do everything. It was, uh, it was just getting catching up on me.
So I get it. Um. Oh, the face is ace. Thank you. Yeah, this is a concept from Patry Bulanovsky. He's got. Um, I'm gonna write, give a, a link to his art station. Art station. Art station. I feel like the best theme music was written in the '80s, like late late '80s. You know, Crossfire! That may be a little too old. Okay. Here is a link to Patrick's stuff, which is awesome. Actually, I'm going to show it here, so. And I really do fancy his beard. He's got a great beard. But this guy is, like, prolific. He's got so much stuff, and it's all freaking awesome. Like, this is so good. Let's just look at this for a second. We're going to take a like, take a break to look at Patrick's stuff and just like, oh, that's so good. Anyways, he's got a great style to him. He's got a great sense of like lighting and colors and, and design. And he's got some great tutorials out there. So check his stuff out because he's great. And here is the link. Um, awesome to hear. Things are good. Finally have a little free time to do some studio work and do some personal stuff for CTN. Nice. What are you doing for CTN, Robbie? I am going to CTN if that, if that, um, helps. Let's see what I've got here. I made a hairbrush that's reversed. So I think with this hairbrush, I just want it to, to pretend like it's doing exactly that. Stroke, elastic, Man, I made this brush like super big. I have to go through that brush again and just get this size right. Um, this video will be on YouTube. It's on the YouTube! Vic? Root? Root Vic? Yes! I'm trying to infiltrate all things. And it took me a while. Finally, the first time I've been on YouTube, or not YouTube, the, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The Facebook? <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Um, you've been doing a lot, bunch of look dev stuff at your studio and tailoring your portfolio to that type of thing, hoping to grab, hoping to show off a few pieces while I'm there. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I love CTN. Um, just getting my schedule in order. Um, I still don't know quite yet if and when I'm doing um, a demo. I love doing demos at CTN because I feel like there's not a there's not a huge 3D presence there. 
but like a, a lot of people are there to get jobs in the like the 3D animation industry. Um, and there's a lot of like 3D artists that are there, but you know mo mostly it's just 2D artists, um, concept artists, look dev artists. So it's always fun to like go and like people are so stoked to be like, yeah, 3D artist, yay! And then we hug and we shake hands and then we do like this little dance that's like, oh man, we're doing a little dance. And then, and then someone comes by and says, stop that. And then we stop. But I don't, I don't want to stop. It's because, you know, it's because we're, we're too cool is why they're asking us to stop. Man, how big did I make that brush? Thing is massive. Yeah, you know, I my the CTN is like my getaway is like uh, as a as an artist and a developing artist like I feel like it's crucial to still take time to to fuel up, you know, to like to to regenerate some of the creativity bones, the re creativity muscles. And so like, you know, CTN is awesome for networking and getting, you know, getting contacts and getting to know people. But honestly, I'm there to like to watch as many keynotes as I can, um, meet some of the artists that I follow and like interact with them. And and it's it's really it's really like my time to just spend some time on me and not worry about. I'm not looking for a job. I mean, I, I'm not never, you know, opportunities are great, but like, I really like where I'm at. So it's not a career, um, opportunity for me. It's literally, I'm just there because I want to be inspired and, um, just feed off the energy that's there. Cause there's always like a really strong, creativity energy and you know like I've had great experiences like I met um uh Kent Milton one year and got to spend like an hour talking to him and if you guys don't know who Kent Milton is he's like my favorite he's probably one of my biggest influences as a as an artist like as a sculptor because his stuff is just so beautiful let's pull him up for a second And I got a hold Kubo, but this is like his stuff, like beautiful, beautiful work. I mean, this is, I wish Google would just show the image now, but you can't see the image large. This is so dumb. Um, but hit like so beautiful, just beautiful, beautiful lines. Yeah, this is he'd make all the statues for the animators to study when they were animating. Um, I don't know why Kubo's not coming up, but like his Kubo characters are great too. Here it is. Like I gotta hold this guy in my hands. I was terrified. I thought I was gonna break it for sure. Like I was dying. Yes, Kent. He's so awesome. He's like this old guy this great you know he's got great facial hair which i appreciate um and so it's just he's just he's just awesome stud um last year i got to, to sit down and talk with 
Steve um, Pilcher, I believe is, is I keep I keep wanting to say Purcell, but it's Pilcher, who is like the kind of one of the big art directors at Pixar. Like he's he color keys everything for Pixar. Um, I got to sit down, sit down with him a couple of times and throw, show him my stuff and kind of get some feedback of like artistic direction only. It was so awesome. Like this guy, it, he came in and he like solved Nemo's lighting problems and coloring problems and, and did all this amazing stuff and, and um, just awesome. So anyway, I just go for those like experiences to be able to, to, uh, just reboot. I'm turning on a different form of transparency. Um, I got a question it says nice model. Did you complete, did you complete, um, create her in ZBrush or Rufferin? This is all start to finish ZBrush actually. Actually the ZBrush is, is so much a part of my workflow that I don't think I do. I hardly start anything out of ZBrush anymore, which it used to be like, I would do all the low poly block in stuff. Um, but now it's just so much it, th because of the Z modeler tools and I have so much control knowing that workflow that, that I can just go into ZBrush and do everything. Just how it's going. Um, Echo Wings. Hey, how's it going? Phil 7H. Phil. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. Thanks for coming by tonight. ZBrush is so easy now. It just so you just why leave? Why would I want to be like I'm spending right now at work? I'm spending probably eighty percent of my time in Maya. Oh Maya! Have you guys ever used Maya? It's horrible. It's like why would we do this to ourselves? Um. And Maya's got some cool things about it, but not really. <laughs> I I hate I hate working in Maya. So like when I get to jump into ZBrush, you know, it's it's finally it's like this brush of fresh air, this breath of fresh brush of fresh breath of fresh air. <laughs> So it's, <laughs> anyways, I really appreciate um, not having to go back to Maya. Like, none of the new features really do too much for me, but <laughs> we're all here for you. <laughs> no, you should say no, stay away, stay away from that Maya. It's no good. Maya's really cool, like, once you have your workflow nailed down, like, one of the reasons why I was in Maya is I was doing, um, what is it called? The hair. The Gen X. The Gen, the Gen X. The X Gen hair stuff. And I, you know, took some time to, to learn and and do hair, which was really cool because that's one thing that ZBrush really sucks at is their fiber fiber mesh is is the worst. Um, Jack, yes, I work with Jack. Jack is a he's an awesome modeler himself. He's interning at Chair and is is keeps bringing me some sweet stuff like every once in a while, and I'm like, dude, this stuff is awesome. So everyone, oh, Jack is on Facebook, by the way. That's why you're not seeing him on the uh, Twitch stream. 
X-Gen is impossible to find tutorials on. Beesman, you are 100% correct that X-Gen is impossible to find good tutorials on. Um, and I was lucky enough to find um, one tutorial that basically was what taught me everything. And it was um, by an artist named Adam Scutt. If you look up his Gumroad, um, let me let me show you Adam Scutt. He is also like luckily enough, and this is why it worked out, is because he also works at Epic Games with me. He works at a different studio. He works at Main Epic Main, um, and so I was able to like ask him questions, and even went out there for a week. To like bounce ideas off of him. Well, not ideas, but like bounce questions off of him. Um, so he kind of like steered me in the right direction. Which was so necessary because... Dang. It was... It's such a... It It's an extremely powerful program. But not knowing... It's all about getting the right workflow. And knowing how to organize things and then like oh man it took forever and now now I would say that I'm okay like if I wanted to make this hair I could do it I wouldn't be happy about it but I could do it and it would look good um let's see not sure if hair is easier in ZBrush it's not the thing about the doing fiber mush hair like it's you run into different problems of like there's no con there's no good control in ZBrush. Like you want to you want to groom it. Like if you start using those comb brushes, you get this weird like ninety degree turn. Um, not Adam Scott. <laughs> Adam Scott, yes, from Uncharted. Scott. Adam Adam Scott. Um yeah, he did he worked on Uncharted and he did like he's he's an awesome artist and like one of the nicest guys too. So it was great to be able to like rub shoulders with him and tell and have him tell me that I suck. Um in a, in a nice way. Um oh yeah, and Danny Mac does have a tutorial on X Gen. I haven't checked that one out um but I'm sure it's good Danny's stuff is always like is always really well thought out and well put together so right now I'm just trying to have like an idea of, of okay so this hair is coming together and now it's got to transition into braids. So how does it do that? So I'm just trying to, to merge these a little bit more. But Adam Scott's stuff is awesome. Um, ooh, you're logging into Twitch now. Jack! Strictly Kappa! <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Everyone meet Jack. Jack is awesome. He's going to be like, he's going to be taking my job in a, like a year or something. So follow him as well. Hey, Robbie, thanks for coming by. Hey, find me at uh, CTN. We'll hang out. And good luck pre prepping your stuff. <laughs> thanks Ashley for your uh, emoji <laughs> scaring um, Jack away <laughs> hello Jack oh good okay good <laughs> So we're going to be best friends, Robbie. 
it's funny because like I still like I just wander around and I'm like, hey guys, you guys, you guys want to do art? I'll do art. <laughs> and like I I come up to these guys as I've known for years, like um, Cheeks Galloway, Sean Galloway. Like we're we're actually pretty good friends, but every time I'm like Sean, oh man. I like I freaking love you and he's like, "Yeah, Matt, I know. Shut up." Actually, he would never do that because he literally is the nicest guy alive. Sean Galloway. <laughs> Think of small talk. Yeah, I do that all the time. Okay. Oh, uh, so how's your uh, look at flashcard dog? Best friends for life now? Yes, yes. Anyways, so now. I've got a little bit of stuff. Um, hey, we'll see you. We'll see you, Robbie. <laughs> yes, I get anxious around so Sean because, like, I know it's like it's like being next to. I'm trying to 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 put this in 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 words of like being next to Sean who's so incredibly talented but yet like one of the humblest guys you've ever met is like it makes it gives you this feeling of like oh man I've done nothing right in my life <laughs> because he's just he's so awesome um <laughs> I I honestly think better of myself uh maybe <laughs> Okay, I'm going to start just laying on a bunch of flyaways that I might take away or I might keep. Oh my gosh, I just created the biggest brush. I wish I could resize brushes that I've already made. Like, does that make sense? Like, edit without having to recreate or... I mean, oh, never mind, I'm just going to stop talking. Just gonna stop talking. Ashley's over there, like, oh my gosh, just stop talking. Ashley, are you going to the the ZBrush Sumut Sumote? Um, LOL, I just tend to get uncomfortable close and look at the person when they aren't looking at me and then look away until they feel my eyes burning into their skull and then they <laughs> initiate conversation. Then I'm unable to hold it up and stand awkwardly smiling. <laughs> you got a job that way. Ah, very effective. Uh-huh, okay. So that's like the creeper, um, which I think you could probably get away with, um, but because of the facial hair and this is a sign of evil um so it's a little bit harder to get away with that kind of stuff on my end so i have to be like sly like i have to i have to break the ice with like a, an awkward joke like so hot in california huh like who knew <laughs> you know something dumb um, and then I, I always like, um, there's artists that I'm really good friends with on social media, but we've never met in person. And so I just assume that they don't actually know who I am or care. So like, I'll introduce myself uh, to people who, who I'm actually really good friends with online, but because I feel like online and, and real real life isn't the same um so it's it's uh so i'm always like 
hey, so, <laughs> oh, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of your stuff. I love your stuff. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's nice. Like, so what's your name? I'm like, oh, I'm I'm Matt Thorup. Um, I think we actually know each other in the red beard. And they're like, Matt, you idiot. Or they'll just say, Matt, yeah, I know. Or red beard. Ha, ha, ha. You're pulling another sly one. Um... So, yeah. I'm going to use Dylan's hairbrushes for now, too. Dylan's awesome. If you guys don't know Dylan Eckern as well, um, this is Welcome to the Redbeard Live, where I'm plugging a bunch of other artists right now because they're freaking great. Um, Dylan's great. He's an artist at Disney Interact or Disney Feature. Um, a character artist and a really big influence to me as he's his stuff is like is so is so awesome um really cool guy you should definitely check out his work oh no Matt just gen just gently brush your beard up against people's <laughs> napes when they turn around then <laughs> they turn around absolute turn around and roughly act like you didn't do anything and catch them for a combo. Tell them they look paranoid. Ah hey man, you're <laughs> just do one of these like And when they turn around Oh man, what's going on? You look paranoid. You're you're looking really out there. Is that the that's the plan? That's the that's what is that what the new kids on the block are doing these days? Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, Dylan's work is, is amazing. Um, question from Strictly Koopa or Jack. Uh, <laughs> Matt, how do you typically handle editing very thin subtools in ZBrush? The back face masking helps, but I find it hard to keep things crisp um, and such at a small scale. So that's a great question. Mainly, I try not to... Touch it once it's like once I have the positioning that I want. Uh, I, I want to keep it very. Um, I just want to like if I'm using my move brush, I'm using a big brush that's that's controlled, and then I'm trying not to touch it very much after that because it's just going to cause problems. Like you're going to get. You just have to be so careful with thin areas. So I, I try not to do too much sculpting on them unless it's necessary. If that answers your question. Um, Ashley says it's it's too expensive. Why aren't they flying you out to do like a like the speed sculpt? I feel like Ashley, like you're made for the speed sculpt. You'd kick some trash some kick some trash.
unless like they know you're going to kick trash and that's why they're like, oh man, we can't, we can't let her cream everyone type of thing. <coughs> I'm dying. I'm okay. I did this speed sculpt a couple years. The first year I didn't do too bad. I actually... There was something... Oh, I can't get to it. There's too much trash everywhere. Um, the first speed sculpt that I did, I, I felt okay. And it was like, maybe because it was so out of my element to speed sculpt. And I was in the hard surface group. Um, that I was like, I'm just glad to be here. And then the second time I did the speed sculpt, like, it was, it was a train wreck for me. <laughs> I was, I had this plan of like what I wanted to do and, and, you know, I had this good, that I felt like it was a good concept. Um, and like, And like half an hour into it, I was right on pace with where I wanted to be and where I wanted to go. Um, and I was going to do some cool trickery with Keyshot and ZBrush. And it was going to be this really cool um, thing that I had planned. And then my computer crashed. And I lost like 30 minutes of work. And then I couldn't get back to the rhythm that I was at. And... And... It just went from this really, really, uh, it was just probably, it, my finished result was something that I would never, ever post in public. <laughs> and and it, it was, that was my finished result for the, this contest. It was, it was a ton of fun. Um, but man, I was so disappointed with myself. Oh my gosh, the Christopher Wright, the Christopher Wright on the Facebook is watching me. <laughs> Hi, Christopher Wright. Guys, everyone should know Chris Wright. He is literally the best person you'll ever meet if you ever have the chance to meet him um incredible artist even cooler dude um and that's saying a lot because he's his art is is freaking awesome but he he's the guy who gave me really my first real shot at the industry um as he interviewed me when i had a big ugly mustache and took pity on me to to hire me for a position on their on their team at Disney Interactive. Um he's now doing freaking amazing stuff for Sony Animation Pictures. Yes, the Christopher Wright. Um oh yeah, his models are so clean. I'm getting some comments on the the uh the Twitch you're not seeing, Chris. But his his stuff is like is unreal. Um, so everyone should know Chris if you don't know Chris, cause he is like, he's the legend. Oh my goodness. I'm trying to get this point to work. And it's not working. No, oh, there we go. Um, 
So hi Chris, how are you doing? How you doing Chris? Oh goodness. And now Chris is surfing every day. Um, I actually don't know when he is sculpting or modeling because he's just surfing and skating every day. This is like his his mecca. Um, Sam Nielsen always shows Chris work in class. Yeah, so Sam was there with Chris. Chris was my um, he was my he was my team's lead, and like couldn't have had a better team lead for sure, without a doubt. It was like super fortunate to be able to to have him, you know, you know, fight he helped fight for me to get to be on the team full time. Um you know, he gave awesome direction and gave me shots of like he saw some potential in me and, and got me opportunities to work on my first toy um for Disney Infinity and to you know, just lots of stuff. So he is he is extremely cool and also extremely humble and easy on not too bad on the eyes either <laughs> sorry I apologize I just had some Mexican food and it gets me all excited I like you know Ooh. Oh, I think I might have missed a question. Uh, it's great. Do you have an actual overlay in ZBrush? If so, how do you do that? Um, so the question is, do I have an actual overlay in ZBrush? So yes, I do. This is just a reference image up in ZBrush. And what I do, and I'm going to show this very slowly. Um, <laughs> what else about this, Chris, man? Yes. But let me tell you about the one. No, no can't um so let's let's do the this again so this is just in spotlight so what i do let's i'm going to delete this we start start afresh for those who are just joining us um <laughs> the creepiest icon so then i'm going to go to my textures and i'm going to add the texture that i want not that one um, I'm going to import the texture that I want, which is this one. Open. And then I'm going to add my texture, this one, and I'm going to hit Add to Spotlight in my textures, which will pull up this big thing, hit comma to remove the pop-down menu for the light box, and now I have this image over here. So I can just use these this radial dial to scale it, to move it, wherever I want but the problem is is that it's got this big yellow <laughs> what are tongue noises I don't even want to know <laughs> um, so to get rid of the solid yellow color and this works better when you have solid yellow colors because you could make an alpha in ZBrush or not in ZBrush in Photoshop or a PNG this is just kind of save you a step if you click on paint and then hover over the color <laughs> hold control and alt and click and drag right or left it will make that color disappear so just like that and then I hit Z and it's done and if I want to edit that I just hit Z to bring it back um, and then the last thing you need to remember for it to work perfectly is go under your brush and go to samples this will be taught spotlight projection will be turned on automatically you have to turn that off so now it is just a reference mesh and will not interfere <laughs> it's so creepy it's so very creepy um it will not interfere at all with this mesh at all so there there's that
that we learned that um, Shane and I, Shane Olson, another fine bloke who I worked with at Disney Interactive, we were teaching at the ZBrush Summit, and I was showing people how to make a PNG with transparency that they could bring into Photoshop or into ZBrush to use as an alpha like this. And as I'm doing it, Ofer, who's like the the head programmer and inventor of ZBrush, um, Ofer is like, oh, you could just do that in Z. You could just do that in ZBrush. <laughs> Ooh, cold brew. Oh, I love a cold brew more than anything else. They have this new thing at the Starbucks. Have you ever been to the Starbucks? Well, the Starbucks they have this new thing, and it's called a cold foam cold brew. A salted comb fro foam cold brew, and it is my new favorite thing in the world. Next time I go, I'm definitely going to rub my beard on someone because I'm so happy. You're like, yes, don't you like this cold foam in my beard that didn't touch you? You're the paranoid one, is what I'll say. <laughs> you love liquid cocaine. Uh, <laughs> what's it called, Matt Johnson X? It is a... Um, <laughs> I'm going to write this down. It is a salted cold foam cold brew at the Starbucks. Yeah, so this is this is no sugar it's they put in like the sweet cream a little bit of sweet cream with it and it is magnifique Oh my goodness, my little two-year-old's still awake. He does not go to sleep anymore. And we have, we've have we got no power over it. <laughs> that's, that's the most frustrating thing. Is he's, We used to have power over his sleep because he would only go to sleep with a binky and a bottle. But we just took away his bottle and then we just took away his binky. And now it's like, I don't need those anymore. And now I can just stay up as long as I want because there's nothing you can literally do to make me go to bed anymore. And my wife and I are just like, <laughs> please, please just go to bed. Um, what hairbrush are you using and where can you get it? That is a great question. Oh, so I am using, this is the Dylan Ekron brush. This is from Gumroad. Let me give you the link. He's got one thing on Gumroad, and or I guess he's got two things, um, and they're both free, and they shouldn't be because he's he's a very talented individual. Um, there, that's the link. It is Dylan. Just look up Dylan Ekron. Um, for those of you who are not on my Twitter, that not on my Twitter on the Twitch, this is the link right here: Gumroad.com/slash Dylan Ekron. His hairbrush is awesome. Um, it's he's got a lot of versatility in it. So I, I highly recommend checking that out. As yes, that's the one I'm using tonight.
Um, Tiago's got a question. Um, how do I smooth and turn the hair so easily? That's a great question. So this is a new feature in ZBrush. I don't know if it is actually with ZBrush 2018. I think it is. But I don't know. But I, I feel like I've been using it. Maybe it was with their last one and I just started using it. Um, so what it is, is I'll show you. Let's use that Dylan Eckern hairbrush again. So this is for an example if I'm going to draw this big line. Um, and I want, I don't want this all crazy. If I hover over the curve, and first thing you have to do is you have to turn on um, Elastic or Liquify. I think Elastic works a little bit better. Um, I actually don't remember the difference now that I'm thinking. Uh, but if you click on this, this line with and you see the blue icon or the red icon change to blue and you click and start to drag if you hold shift this is going to smooth out your line your curve so now if i want to take this same line and twist it if i click on it and then hold control i can rotate or i can drag left or right and it will start to twist and this is the twist is affected by how, how big that blue cursor is. So if I make my draw size bigger and then turn it, I get a lot more gradual with that curve. And you can do it anywhere and it will twist and you can make these cool, you know, curls. Um, and then also, because it's got this elastic thing, you can do cool things like this. So I'm going to bring my draw size down. And say I do want that curve back in there. I can pull out. And it keeps the same end point where it is. And I'm just adding detail. And this is just regular. I'm just clicking and dragging. But now let's say uh, I want it to end right here and not right there. If I click on the end point and just drag back, it will actually erase or like shorten my line. But now let's say, oh, I don't want that to be so short. I want it to be longer. I can actually click on the end point and just drag out and it will like continue to drag that line. So it's really easy to use. You just use shift to smooth control to rotate and that's that's it so you'll see me using this a lot especially with this kind of hair where I'm there's a lot of twists so just keeping elastic on actually let's have it come over from the top right here Just make sure that you're clicking on the curve and then hitting shift or control because that will make sure that it works. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool little thing. I, you know, as I'm doing uh, more X Gen hair, um, I'm still I'm still sculpting hair quite a bit, like more than a lot. More than a lot. <laughs> um, because you still need that like base for everything. Split hidden. Oops. Should probably do a save, you know. I've become so comfortable with ZBrush's uh, auto save features that I don't save as nearly as much as I should.
and then that gets me into trouble when I switch back to Maya, which I do not love. One thing that, like, I've been very grateful for as learning how to do hair is the opportunity to just stare at people. <laughs> I mean, I, who doesn't do this as an artist? As like, I just, just stare at people. <laughs> Ooh, eclipse. Um, <laughs> Maya's bay. <laughs> no. Maya loves to crash. The agent is, is correct when saying that. Um, but like, I've just been staring at people's hairs and like figuring out, okay, how does that layer, how would I make that in, in the three dirt, in the third dimension? So it's, it's been, it's been fun to, to do the X gen stuff. Um, Though being in Maya is has not been fun. Maya is man's greatest gift, but also man's greatest curse. Yes, because Maya loved to giveth, and Maya taketh away. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> you hate 3D Studio Max. See, I actually, like, if I had a choice, I like a lot of 3D Studio Max's features more than more than Maya. I think it has a little bit more versatility and is and does some things so much easier than Maya does. Um, but this is again like coming from five years ago, I think was the last time I used 3D Studio Max. But when learning 3D, I actually was learning, um, I was learning both. It wasn't just, it wasn't just Maya and it wasn't just ZBrush, it was I was learning 3D Studio Max and Maya and ZBrush kind of all at the same time which was which was actually like really cool because it felt I, I gotta learn the ins and outs of both of them so I felt comfortable no matter where but now you put me in like 3D Studio Max and I wouldn't know what to do I'd be there crying rubbing my beard on people But I remember I really loved making tubes and like accordion tubes for some reason in 3D Studio Max. Like I felt like that was a that was like a gold point.
Um, you got to head out, Specs. Hey, thanks for coming by. As always, it's a pleasure. You take care, too. And I'll get back to your email um, tomorrow morning, so look for something from me. Um, question, how often or have you sculpted traditionally? I want to get into that, but I'm not sure what to start with, or which tools to start with. Um, I, I used to sculpt, you know, regular, not regularly, like, um, what's the proper term? I, I have sculpted, but never, um, I, I've never been consistently sculpting traditionally. And, but the tools that I would recommend getting, close holes, this may be a good, a good, bad idea. Okay. Um, the tools that I'd recommend getting are basically the same tools, like the cheap tools that you would buy for five bucks at like a craft tool or a craft store. Just it's nothing super special wood I mean I've got my my sculpting tools I think they're upstairs next to my pumpkin sculpting tools um so close holes auto group well whoever made this brush I'm very grateful because they were doing it right So now, what I'm going to do is turn on mask by polygroups. I'm just going to inflate like a few of these to, to break up some of the repetitive patterns of these. You know, uninflate or deflate, if you will depending on where you are. Um, try getting monster clay instead of like the super sculpt of your shirt. Yeah, I've, I've actually heard a ton of good things from monster clay. And I barely sculpt. I do want to take, um, what is it, Andre, um, his sculpting course that he does. He's like, he has a, like a few day workshop. I wouldn't, I've talked with him about it. I'm like, how, how do we do it? And I was planning on doing it this year. Um, but we got, caught up on doing some red beard stuff instead which was good it was fine we did some good red beard stuff see now that braid looks chunky looks like it's got some good stuff to it um, I remembered your tutorial was the first one I ever watched. I still use your UI to this day. Yes! It's a great UI! What can I say? I'm biased towards my UI. Mainly the color schemes. <laughs> um, oh, good. It you can get more, a ton more detail in it because it hardens at room temperature. Oh, and it softens at body temperature. That's cool. I would love, there's too many things I want to get into. One um, is more traditional sculpting. Uh, two is like costume making, like with e EVA foam. Like that is, I think that's my next venture actually as like I have big plans for for Halloween. Halloween is like probably my favorite holiday. 
And I say probably, but it is without a doubt. It's my favorite holiday. Um, I used to make Halloween movies with my brothers that were um, they were just so good. You know, actually they were they were pretty darn good for amateur stuff compared to like other people's amateur horror movies where they're like yeah man this is oh man you know like I don't know if, if you guys are a big amateur horror movie watchers um, but our stuff was pretty great we would show it every year at a we'd rent out a local theater and we'd show <laughs> we'd show our movies there and we always like would sell out a couple shows. I mean, we only had two shows, but we'd always, you know, more or less sell out, which was always surprising because I don't because they're horror movies. Let's just show you. I'll just show you one small thing. Mm. Just this. This is all you're going to get. Is just this. Look at that handsome fella. Ah, yeah. Oh, man. Nope, nope. You're going to see my big entrance. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let's get back. Okay, just, just enjoy this for what it is. This one was called The Hitchhiker. I used to be cool. You changed the color screen scheme now. An unlit, an unlit cigarette. Oh man, <laughs> that's all you guys get. It's so good. The whole movie's good. Filled with comedy, you know, perfect timing, terror. Oh yeah, it was terrifying. It had all, it had all the makings of an instant Halloween classic. Classic. <laughs> but it was really good for a time. Okay. I'd still be making them if we could. I guess I can push play. Yeah, I put the movies on Gumroad. <laughs> I think you can watch them on Vimeo somewhere. Oh, I'm missing some comments on the... Uh, um, the YouTube. Sorry, guys. Um, I've got a question is what are your anatomy references? And I'm always spot on with the, with good anatomy. Do you, do you under, did you already answer my question? I left for a minute. Oh, sorry about that. Um, I'm, I'm using a thing and I'm guessing it's maybe not showing the comments from YouTube. So the anatomy references, I just, I, I grab from, from either Pinterest or from, I actually went on proco.com and I bought a couple of their anatomy packs as well as like some 3D anatomy models that I use. Um, and I always, when I'm working on anatomy, I have images up. Even though I've done it a bunch, like I've done it a, bi a billion times, it's still something that having photo references, um, any type of references for anatomy is like, is key. So. So now the question is this geometry is a little hokey. So the question is what's Let's try this. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Then we're going to do a polish, keep groups, dynamesh. I should totally save it's going to crash right now. But then I can go through and polish out some of those funky womps, is what I like to call them. And then I can go back in and sculpt some stuff. So I'm dynameshing these. These are all different polygroups. It's kind of hard to tell. These are all different polygroups. So if I just turn on groups and polish, it kind of smooths out some of that funky womp topology. <laughs> um, yeah, braids, like, it, this is a time-consuming thing to do braids and especially, like, make your own brush. So because I this all started off to be this I just wanted this to be a one or two night thing um, and it's turned out <laughs> that it's been a lot of fun to model. So I've put in a lot more into it than I would normally do for a speed sculpt. Um, but it's it's been so much fun. So I just anyways I just, I just downloaded a a braid IMM brush. Ooh, you know what? I like the way this one turned out more when I didn't subdivide it up. Okay, so we're gonna step these back. Then I can just smooth out some of the some of the stuff, but I like the edges that it pulls up. That, that looks good. And Funky Womp is a good um, rap name, a rapist's name. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that feels great. Um, questions? Hey, I am on Twitch as well. Yes. What material am I using? I am using Zebro materials for all of this. So this is between Z7 and Z1. If you go to, if you look up Zebro, um, ZBrush, it'll pull up all of his materials that he has. They're all for free. Check out Sirke Camprubian Gumroad. Let's check this out real quick. Gumroad. Okay.
looks like he's got some stuff. So looking at this, um, it looks like it follows a little bit of of mine and Shane's workflow. Probably taking a little bit from each. But the anatomy is off on that just a little bit. I mean, it's probably okay to start from. But just looking at it, I'd be I'd be weary to just strictly go off that because it does look like the anatomy is is kind of off on it. But it's yeah. Oh, he had a braid brush also. Okay, okay, yeah, the braid brushes are are great. Um, can I send the link to the zebra? Yeah, zebra materials. I'm just gonna post the link to things. Copy. Let's see here. Now he's got now he's got like a billion different materials, but they're all kind of fairly close. Wow, he's got a new clay set. That's great. Um, copy there. Oh, send the link of the Twitch. Yeah, I can send you the link of the Twitch. <laughs> so, sorry, miscommunicado. There we go. The great thing about Dylan Ekron's hairbrushes... Um, is that they subdivide beautifully. That's one of the main reasons I like using them. This is also another brush I use quite a bit. It's just the Move, um, the Move Topology brush. So if I have a lot of like little bitties that are in the same um, poly group or in the same sub tool, it's easy to grab one little thing and move it. At some point, I'll probably dynamish all these together. Who knows when, though?
I'll give you a thumbs up. <laughs> um, do I like any of J. Scott Campbell's work? J. Scott Campbell's work is beautiful. Um, I actually found myself accidentally at a dinner with J. Scott um, a couple of years ago at CTN. That was another thing that I was like, ah, I really like your, I really like your stuff. By the way, are you gonna finish your fries? Because, um, super nice guy, that J. Scott Campbell. I love his work. He's got, I love his pinups. Um, he's he's got a really good sense of like he's got a just his his style defined, and he just knows how to make appealing shapes and appealing poses and. Um, super, super awesome stuff. So, yeah, his stuff's great. I've always, like, wanted to do maybe one of his pinups, but, like, um, his, his style is so, is probably more sexy than I want to do, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, Like I, I like a certain level of, of sexiness, <laughs> but his stuff is is beautiful and awesome. But it's also like Dean Eagle. His stuff is great. Um, love love his pinups, but just probably something that I I wouldn't do. Um. <laughs> hey Ashley, thank you so much for coming by, and you're a creep. Um, but I appreciate that. <laughs> come to CTN this year. Yeah, come to CTN this year. CTN's the best. It's the beast. We'll all hang out and we'll, we'll laugh. Oh man, will we laugh. <laughs> yes, bees, bees on man got the the Nacho Re Libre reference. I'm. We tried watching Nacho Libre with my kids, so my kids are like, um, six, four, and two, and we're like, oh, Nacho Libre, of course they're gonna find this hilarious, but they could not understand a thing that is being said, and it was just, it. <laughs> It, it, like my wife and I are like laughing. You're like, why are you laughing? I don't get it. She likes poopies. <laughs> East the best. It is the best. Okay, so I'm gonna probably do one. Well. Okay, I'm going to do one more pass on the hair and really cut in to get some good, good, uh, ambient just on some of these folds.
Oh, oh cool. So you're tr currently um, trying to sculpt one of J. Scott Campbell's um, artworks. It's very hard to get the forms right. Yeah, he's got... It, his style, um, I would imagine, is very hard to translate into 2D. It's very, it's very graphic in some sense, but it's also very um, organic too. So it's to be able to mix those two that I, I just imagine it'd be so very hard. He had a, a Tinker Bell piece that like I'm like oh man I would I would love to model that um, and then lo and behold it actually he he got someone he partnered with someone to do a few Disney maquettes and that was one of them that they did and I was like oh that's so cool he's so awesome. At some point, I'm going to have to start dynamishing some of this together. But I don't want to. Um, have I ever tried doing one of Shane Glein's sculpts? Um, no, I haven't. I love his stuff as well. Um, I've been wanting to do a sculpt from Shane Glein's. His stuff is, is beautiful. I've got a couple of his art books. It's it's hard, like, um, I think there's, like, stuff that I see all the time, like, oh, man, I want to sculpt that. And so there's, like, this. But I want to also finish what I've done. So I'm in this constant battle of, one, wanting to, to sculpt the stuff that I see, and then, two, I want to finish... But if I want to, but I, I can never just like do a speed sculpt for some reason. I'm finding this about myself is that I have to like make it as polished as I can possibly do. Like it just can't be quick and dirty as much as I want it to be. Like it's got to have to reach a certain level of, of polish before I'm like, okay, I can let this one die. Um, Jack Matthews was a sculptor. Yeah, Jack Matthews. That's right. Awesome. He he nailed it. He was he did such a good job with those. Um, you started Commissioner Gordon that he made but never finished. Oh, cool. Do I have a 3D printer? Yes, I have this. Uh, um, you can't really see. It's a Prusa. We're gonna turn this just a little bit. It's this little 3D printer. It's just a filament FDM printer. Um, nothing too crazy or special. It's, it does a great job, though. Like, I have, I've have got no complaints. I wish I used it more. Um, but there's, like, dust on it right now because it hasn't been used in a couple of months. But that will change as Halloween season approacheth. And like, how far do I want to go before I just say, okay, that's good enough. Um, let's take a break and go back to to the 
to this to the, what did I do here? Uh, let's just do, I'm going to quickly finish this stuff. And maybe that's just where we end with her tonight. I really want to do a poly paint, but I think I'm going to run out of time. And I've got to wake up early in the morning for a doctor's appointment. Just little, I can do little things that will make this look cool. Like just throwing little bevels. that makes it just gives it a level of interest that's that will pop and then we'll inset it into the to the arm a little bit more so when it is rendered those bevels will just catch just a little bit of of um, light. Ooh, look, a link to Jake Matthews. To Jack Matthews. Yeah, his stuff is great. Yeah, he, he's definitely caught the J. Scott Campbell, um, like the face. He's got such a distinct face. Like this Tinkerbell. Ooh, so cool. Love the feet on this. More than anything else, the feet are so good. Yeah, that Alice sculpt is so cool. So spot on. Um, I'm going to take a two-minute break. Just going to go grab a water, um, and then I will be back. So you hold on just one second.
I don't have a B the B right the BRB screen. <laughs> Everyone spam their worst sculpting advice. <laughs> oh, bees on man! No, not the red, the red wax, mat cap. Oh, don't even joke about that. That's blasphemy. That is blasphemy. Sometimes like adding in just bevels to things. It's like so relaxing. I don't know why. I don't know why no 3D program can figure this out. That when you have like an angle like this or a corner, when you bevel it, it never bevels correctly. I feel like there should be math that could fix that. Like there's got to be some math like they could fix it. I don't know it. Don't ask me. I don't do math. I'm an artist. But there should be someone out there that knows math they can fix this beveling problem so it can just follow the inside. Follow the inside. That's all I want. <laughs> I'm I'm grateful that you're keeping me company. So I'll probably keep going for like 10 more minutes. Um, if you guys do have any questions, please let me know. Probably let me know now is what I'm saying. Unless, unless you're Jack, you can let me know tomorrow because I'll see you at work. But for everyone else, Hey, yeah, we'll see you, bees. You have a good one.
See, it gets most of the corners, and then you get these angles. These two, see? Yes, see? Where's the math now? Where's the math now is what I want to know. I've got to go in and manually move it. What are we, barbarians? Not moving or moving things with our hands and not the technology that we've been blessed with. So basically all I'm going about now is just figuring out how much I want this to stick off. I just want it a little bit, maybe check where the bevel starts. That way you're just seeing like a little bit of the, the lip. And then for like these details, I'll probably go, I'll model it, you know, just how I want. And then because I'm not using this for any sort of animation or game or um, I will just dynamesh it and then cut in cut in those details real deep. What's the difference between adding an edge loop and creasing the edge? Um, preference, <laughs> probably. So, yes, we should have self-driving cars and bevels, curling bevels. Um, it really is just preference because you can get a very similar result by having creases. This gives you a little bit more control when you're, you know, you're telling... This is kind of like a traditional modeling technique. You know, just putting in, like, when you're working with dynamic subdivisions and and all that fun stuff in Maya. So really, this just gives me just a tiny bit more control.
especially when I'm, you know, just working with some of these little areas. I just think it looks cleaner too, but it's all preference, just personal preference. Because you could use crease and then change the crease level. Yeah, Wacky Zoe, that's, I think that's the same. You're just kind of, you're controlling the edges a little bit better. It's just a little bit more control, a little bit more polish. The bevels look better, the edges look better. But it's you can get a very similar result with creases if you play around with this. The problem with with the crease level though um, is you have to subdivide everything really high. When this, I can get away with maybe one or two sub tools or some divisions. But with a uh, with doing you know adding edge loops you can get away with just with various little divisions i guess i already said that um i need to add z modeler into my workflow i would always take it into three C yeah if you can once you get comfortable with the with the Z modeler, like I never ever do straight building from from Maya. Um, I'm just in in a Z brush, and I can quickly get everything that I want. The only problem is like there's one thing I wish it had. Um, I wish it had a way to cut poly like poly loops so you can do a little bit of edge flow stuff. It's a little bit harder. It's not impossible. It's just harder. Sometimes frustrating because you can't direct some of it. Yeah, I agree, Wacky Zoe. Um, I've only used it to make polygroups and add 
more loops. Um, bevel, extruder, great. Bridge, um, close, you know, bridging and like closing gaps are great. Um, there's some cool stuff, especially when you're, if you're using like tubes and you want to like continue, you want to have like a, a perfect curve from one tube to the next. Uh, it's, uh, there's some cool stuff there. I keep these all one. I did. I'm such a jerk. I might have to rebuild those. Blah. Okay, I'll figure out that next time. <laughs> Some messy stuff in there. Okay, well, I think that's probably where we're going to end tonight, guys. Um, thanks for coming out and for the questions and the conversations and for um, everything. I would rage and go to a Maya and quad for everything. <laughs> nice. Um, thanks for coming out and for the comments and for making me laugh. Um, we'll continue next week making some awesome stuff and... Uh, I guess that's that's it. Happy sculpting, everyone. Come by again, and I'll post some updates on this on the social medias, um, and then we will see you next week. Okay. Adios, y'all.